So tonight, Celtic have the honour of taking on Bayern Munich at Parkhead as they look to find a way past the German giants. Otherwise, their incredibly tough task of qualifying from their group becomes pretty much impossible, especially with the trip to Paris on the horizon. So while Celtic may need a miracle against Bayern Munich, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen the Scots slay a European giant on a Champions League night at Celtic Park. There was the victory over Barcelona that made the forgotten Tony Watt a hero, and then there was the victory over AC Milan 10 years ago, back when the Italian club were European champions. That's the game we're going to look at today, just over a decade on from their famous 2-1 victory, looking at who started for Celtic and where they are now. In goal was Arta Boric. The Polish goalkeeper spent five years at Celtic Park after signing from Legia Warsaw, and his penalty heroics in the qualifying stages of the Champions League gave Celtic the opportunity to beat the European champions AC Milan back in October 2007. Ending his time at Celtic with an old firm victory, Boric joined Fiorentina in 2010, but returned to the UK in 2012 when he joined Southampton for his first crack at Premier League football. Often erratic, the keeper joined Bournemouth in 2014 to help them reach the Premier League for the first time in their history, and had been their number one keeper for the past two seasons in the Premier League, only to be playing back up to Asmir Begovic now. At right back we have Jean-Joel Perrier Doom. Christ that's a mouthful. Having joined on loan in January making himself a hero by scoring the winner in the 2007 Scottish Cup final, things were going brilliantly for the French fullback since arriving in Scotland. His move was made permanent that summer and Perrier Doom started the game against AC Milan but sadly didn't finish it, tearing his Achilles tendon that ruled him out for 6 months. He would leave Celtic in 2009 and return to France, joining Toulouse in October that year where he spent 2 years. Capped 20 times for Cameroon, Toulouse were Perrier Doom's final club and he has recently celebrated his 39th birthday, so many happy returns. Centre back was Stephen McManus. A product of Celtic's youth academy, Stephen McManus captained Celtic to victory over AC Milan 10 years ago, opening the scoring before Kaka drew AC Milan level. McManus' Celtic career due to a close once Tony Mowbray took over the club and he headed to Middlesbrough in January 2010, initially on loan before making the deal permanent that summer, linking back up with Gordon Strachan. A forgetful spell in England ended with two loan spells at Bristol City, before heading back over the border by signing for Motherwell, where he was still playing until last season, announcing his retirement in August this year and taking up a coaching role at the club. He was alongside Gary Caldwell. McManus' partner that night against Milan, Caldwell almost followed him to Middlesbrough to play for Strachan again after a Conrad standoff at Celtic Park in 2010. Caldwell would instead sign for Wigan Athletic in the Premier League, helping them avoid the drop three years on the bounce before they finally fell into the Championship in 2013, winning the FA Cup in the same season. After suffering from a hip injury for a long time, Caldwell retired in February 2015, joining the coaching staff at Wigan's Academy. However, Caldwell was in the first team dugout in April 2015 after Malky Mackay's dismissal, but was unable to stop the Latics slipping into League One. Caldwell's side were promoted back to the championship at the first time of asking, but he was sacked in October 2016 after 18 months in charge. Caldwell's last job was at Chesterfield, who he managed between January and September of this year. At left back was Lee Naylor. Much like the majority of the players in this team that we've looked at so far, Lee Naylor also left Celtic Park in 2010, as Tony Mowbray looked to build his own team in Glasgow. As for Naylor, he joined Cardiff City where he spent two very disappointing seasons before being released, joining Atri and Stanley in September 2013 on a short term deal, leaving in January 2014 and signed for Derby a month later, who were his final club in football. Now age 37, Naylor is a part of the Play With A Legend agency and events company where he is up for hire for events and commercial work. I wonder if I'll get him to do my job for a day. In midfield was Scott Brown. He may be captain and leader extraordinaire now at Parkhead, but back in 2007, Scott Brown was just a young Celtic pup, having only just arrived at the club that summer from Hibernian for £4.4 million. The midfielder has been the captain since 2010 and is a modern day Celtic legend, having won 13 trophies during his decade at the club. Now aged 32, Brown is still as important as ever at Celtic Park. Next up we've got Paul Hartley. The Hamilton born midfielder had moved to Celtic in January of 2007, but it was only really the following season that he impressed in green and white, until Tony Mowbray got shot of him in 2009. There's a theme here. Hartley joined Bristol City on a free in 2009, then returned to Scotland after a year on a free, heading to Aberdeen, where he was named captain on his first day, but retired at the end of the season due to injury. Hartley has since moved into management, taking charge of Alloa Athletic, Dundee and currently Falkirk. Next in midfield was Yuri Yarosik. 
The Czech midfielder cost Celtic £2 million in 2006 from Chelsea, and the game against AC Milan in 2007 was his first start for the club in more than six months. Jarosik left in January 2008 to return to Russia, where he spent two years. He would go on to play for Real Zaragoza, Sparta Prague and Alaves where he ended his career in 2015. Just turned 40, Jarosik is now the assistant coach for Sparta Prague's reserve side. Also in midfield was Massimo Donati. After signing from AC Milan in June 2007, Massimo Donati helped his new team beat his former employers just months later when they met in the Champions League, but the Italian would only spend two years in Scotland, returning to Italy in 2009 with Bari, then go on to play for Palermo and Hellas Verona before another spell with Bari. Donati is still playing at the age of 36, but he's back in Scotland, lining up for Hamilton Academical. Next up we've got Aidan McGeady. The Republic of Ireland International made his Champions League debut against AC Milan in 2004, and three years later he was part of the team that beat them on that famous night at Celtic Park. Having looked like a real star, McGee headed to Spartak Moscow in 2010 in what was a strange move. In 2014 he was back in the UK when he joined Everton, and McGee has been inconsistent ever since, showing flashes of brilliance at Goodison Park. The winger would have loan spells at Sheffield Wednesday and Preston North End, then signed for Sunderland permanently this summer to link up again with Simon Grayson, where again he has shown flashes of brilliance during a wretched time for the Black Cats. And up front was Scott McDonald. Celtic's hero that night against AC Milan, Scott McDonald pounced on a fumble by Dida, scoring a late winner to give his side a famous victory over the European champions. The Aussie striker scored consistently during his two and a half seasons at Celtic, then joined Gordon Strachan's new Celtic side in February 2010, signing for Middlesbrough for 3.5 million quid. The goals weren't quite as regular in England, and McDonald joined Millwall in 2013. He returned to Motherwell on a free in 2015, and is still going at the age of 34, playing for Scottish Championship side Dundee United. So that's where Celtic's starting 11 from their 2-1 victory over AC Milan in 2007 are now. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and how you think Celtic will do against Bayern Munich tonight. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.